Uh, with that, uh, Dan, can you kick off the, our meeting and our toast? Absolutely. So if you have a glass, go ahead and raise it. And Ellie, thank you for the introduction because that was perfect because this is the first meeting of spring. And spring is a time of renewal and hope and excitement. And we are likely coming out of COVID. I'm going to stick with likely because likely is a good word. <laughs> In honor of that, I want everybody to put a big smile on and think of happy thoughts and welcome to the first meeting of spring. Cheers. 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 Hello. Beautifully said. Um, all right, so I have one official thing uh, before I move it over to Brad and then I'll introduce for, um, I'm very embarrassed about this because uh, I have been carrying this around for a while and it's been in my like rotary um, bag that I have. And I was supposed to present it when I presented the endowment uh, a couple of months ago when uh, Oren, I think he was present at that meeting. So it was kind of like good timing, but a member of ours wasn't there and it felt silly to present this award with that person not there. I don't, I don't really understand the point of that. So, <laughs> so I wanted to take a moment to present this Paul Harris Fellow Award to none other than our own, oops, oh, our own. Dan Hibbing. Hey. Hey. I hit that threshold. Yeah, a while ago. <laughs> a while ago. <laughs> uh, and of course, you know, it comes with a, you know, nice pin. <laughs> um, so for our guests that might not know what this is, uh, uh, <laughs> it's when a member reaches donating $1,000 to the Rotary Foundation, and this is a way to commemorate uh, joining the Paul Harris Society and Club. Um, so welcome, you know, you're, you're part of the crew now, um, and congratulations. I'll give this to you when I see you relatively soon, but I've been meaning to present that to you, and uh, got lost in my bag. No, you got to pin it right now. Figure it out. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Can we edit a pin on him? <laughs> well, can do it. Oh. Go ahead. Throw it right on his forehead. Use, use me as a stand-in. Oh, I could use you as a stand-in. That's right. Um, I don't really want to put the hole right now. Anyway, um, with that, Brad, if you want to take it away to kind of give an update. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Don't we have, are we doing any happy things? Uh, because of time, I don't know. Oh, OK. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You have one? If you have one, we can kind of kick it off. Absolutely. Okay. I have one because of today's holiday. Do oh. we know what today is? Yes. It's International Tamale Day. <laughs> it is <laughs> national. Day. It's National Puppy Day. I've been watching a puppy cam all day today of four golden retriever puppies falling all over each other and laughing <laughs> about it all day. <laughs> Everybody could have a puppy cam. I'm sorry. So I'll, I'll donate some happy bucks. Sorry, Jolene. All right. I've been listening to you laugh at the puppies for two days. So <laughs> is that what he's been doing? <laughs> yeah. Very like, awesome. oh, that was a takedown. Oh, that one, that one fell over. Oh, it's dinner time. Oh my god. Oh god, it goes on forever. <laughs> happy International or National Puppy Day. There you go. All right. Well done, Iris. It's going. <laughs> Still haven't posted a picture for that, but uh, Iris knows what I'm talking about. Yes, she's looking at the meat that we have on the cheese plate right now. <laughs> no, no, no fontina for you. Um, thank you. Are there any others? I don't want to, you know, now that we started that. Um, happy bucks are when we're, you know, we just want to share something good that's happened, and it's uh, funds we kind of accumulated pre previously covered uh, refreshments for our live events. Um, but uh, we're, we're planning on utilizing it for something else, hopefully, or for live events once they start. Any other happy books? I'll be happy that the NC2A seems to be getting their stuff together and supporting their, their female athletes in the, <laughs> in the tournament that just started. Yeah. But, so that they can be tested for COVID properly and fed and work out and do
do all the things that the boys get to do. Right. There you go. Good idea. Awesome. Perfect. Uh, well, with that, um, you know, I will also give some happy bucks because I'm stoked that we have a guest today. <laughs> um, I'm also really stoked that my emails went out early, well, they're not earlier, but <laughs> like it's like <laughs> a little more consistent. Um, and we have speakers lined up to, for like a, a decent extent. So or like timeline. So well moving done. Along. I feel like I got my second wind. <laughs> well done. Well, I'll give, a, I'll give a little bit of happy bucks because we finally got some tax documents in that we needed to do for our nonprofit, which was a real royal pain. And I sent them in by certified mail today. Oh, wow. Congratulations. Girl. Not all of them. We got more to do, but the ones we have to do, the deadline hasn't come yet. So. Huh. All right. Yes. We can all be happy for the extra 30 days of gathering ourselves to submit taxes. <laughs> Always a win. All right. Well, with that, thank you everyone for your happy bucks. Uh, Brad, will you take it away to give our update or do you need me to give another intro? No, no, that's fine. I can do this. Um, I thought what I would do here is give a, an update finally on the uh, Rotary Peace Mural project because we've now gotten to a point where we turned a big corner last week and I've got enough that I can do an update. So let me see if I can get through the technology here and do a screen share of, of the, the mural project. So this was something that started back in June um, with an idea. Brandy took the idea to the Rotary Club of Oakland number three, uh, got their attention, and we started working with them. Um, we crafted the basic concept of the, the artistic concept was creating a mural in Oakland that would express peace through unity to graphically represent that when diversity comes together, it can create a more equitable, inclusive, and peaceful community. And so we laid out some objectives. First, there's the static mural, the mural that you would see when you walk up to the, to the um, display. And it would be to clearly communicate the artistic concept to represent the diversity of the community so that when viewer, so that viewers can self-identify themselves into the mural. The figure should be dynamic, not static, and show an interrelationship. Rotary's brand positioning is people of action. Any figure should represent this brand. And then finally, our logo, the Rotary Master Brand, should be clearly visible. So those were the primary artistic objectives of the mural. Now, the second part is that after the mural is done is that we're going to add augmented reality to it where you can view not just the mural itself but a whole different dynamic of the mural um, with your smartphone. So those objectives were a little bit different. Those were to clearly communicate the diversity, equity, and inclusion creates peace. So while that first, the, the static mural may communicate, uh, make a statement, we want to emphasize it in the augmented reality. Secondly, is to reinforce that one of the core values of Rotary Clubs of Oakland is bringing together our diversity to create a more peaceful community. And finally, to create a visually exciting and engaging experience. Anyway, there's two parts to it, the static um, presentation and the uh, augmented reality. So who's this team that's been put together? There's five of us on this committee, two people from Oakland Three and two from the Rotary Club of Piedmont Montclair. Allison Bliss, whose expertise is as a marketing consultant, and Tom Limon, who's a real, in real estate, a nonprofit director, and notably in the Oakland Planning Commission. Two people from the Piedmont Montclair Club, Sarah Linda Jackson, who is the club president, who works for Kaiser, and actually has been responsible for a lot of the placement of public art that are around the, the properties of um, Kaiser. And Mark Delventhal, who is now retired, but was the director of uh, Parks and Rec for the city of Piedmont forever. And if you've ever been down to the Oakland Boathouse and saw the entrance stairs that go into the uh, boathouse, into the restaurant there, um, the chateau, uh, the Lake Chateau, um, you'll notice that there's an indelible mark of rotary on those stairs. Mark was the key driver to make that happen working with the city. So we have a really good group of people that are bringing each of them certain expertise that have been a part of creating not just um, those, uh, the objectives that you saw, but actually carrying this project forward. And so in this part, 
we then had the idea, but what we needed was a partner to be able to help us craft the mural and the, the process. And so we engaged somebody that we're familiar with, and that was the Dragon School. The Dragon School, um, we did a project that where a lot of you came out and whitewashed a, a wall before a mural was put in place. They have two major drivers in this. Well, let me go say first, the Dragon School has morphed into 333 Arts. The Dragon School and it came out of a project out of Chinatown, but it's become far more than that, where they engage artists to do murals some of them are well-known artists and others are, as the name school would imply, young artists that are trying to get some traction. And they have a full range and a full portfolio. The two drivers in that is Sage Loring. I know that Dan, you had had a chance to meet and work with Sage and then his wife, Terry Loring. So they've been partners at helping us first find um, artists and potential artists. And they will actually be art directors in this process to liaise between the static billboard or the static mural and the, the uh, augmented reality. And so in this effort, we've been looking for an artist and we've, we have secured one. The person's name is human and her name really is um, Allison, uh, Allison, and I'm gonna forget her last name because we call her human all the time. Anyway, she's a local artist of Oakland and she's done everything. She's done all the art that you see on this, um, on the screen, including the picture of herself, a young woman. Um, and she does extraordinary work, not only murals, but also notably she did Pink's Hurts to be Human cover for her album. And those are actually Steph Puri's legs and the shoes that she designed for the art on the shoes that are there. She is an extremely noted artist, probably one of the top three or four in, in the country and she has signed on to do this project. And so in this process, now that we had a concept and an artist, it turned to where? And we started looking all over Oakland to see where we could find. And one of the compelling locations was Jack London Square because it is in many ways a hub and a central hub for the city of Oakland. However, the challenge with uh, Jack London Square is there are numerous owners that have, or at least stakeholders that have a vested interest. Property owners who own the buildings, the Port of Oakland who has authority of all those items that are on the, there, and the Coastal Commission that has a certain um, requirement for anything that comes close to the water. Well, we were able to reach out to the property management firm through a connection that Tom Limon had um, to the property management firm of CIM. I don't know what it stands for and neither do they because it's been the initials for quite some time. <laughs> The key person who we worked with turned out to be when I Googled her, uh, well, excuse me, when I looked for her on LinkedIn, turned out we had a mutual friend in Florida that was in Rotary in Florida. And so I'd sent him a note going, how do you know this person? And he said, well, she used to be in, uh, she was the general manager of the, the hotel at which we met. And she was actually a Rotarian in our club and was Rotarian of the year. So she was the key decision person that we came to that said, we're really interested. And after hearing what we were trying to do, said, we are looking to place a mural in Jack London Square, but we're only ever going to do one. This is not gonna be a new art form that we're doing here. We have to do one. Well, so then we put human to work and we actually contracted with her in order to come up with concepts. And while what I'm about to show you is still in the concept form, this is not what the final uh, panel will look like, it is what it will, it's where it currently is. There's some adjustments we're going to make, but it'll give you a really good idea of where we are going. We will see one more final concept board that we will give approval to. And with that concept board, she'll then do a specific articulation that we will give a sign off. And then she'll put the pan, then she will put the mural in place. This is the rotary piece mural design concept. Now, what she does when she does this is she gets a couple of models, takes pictures of them and works them it will be much more surreal when it finally gets done. But it will give you an idea. There are two fundamental differences what, we, what will happen between now and the next iteration of the concept. Number one, the word peace will become far more integrated into the artwork and a little more abstract. It will still communicate the word peace, but it will be much more of the art as opposed to a footnote. And secondly, these characters, their arms, two of them will reach out so that it reaches to the viewer as part of the artwork. So this is where we are. Once um, 
uh, CIM saw this concept board, they took it to their ownership and the port, the, uh, the Coastal Commission and all of the owners have agreed that it will be placed. And yes, we're going to go forward with it, which includes funding, but most importantly includes location. So where will it be located? This, as you can see, is Jack London Square. This is the main entrance to Jack London Square. This is actually Broadway. Going to the right of the picture is where you'd go to Scott Seafood. You may be familiar with this entire building, which is the parking lot. And you see over here, this is a display board they have, an electronic display board. What they're going to do is they're going to move this display board over into this area. And they're going to do, they're going to completely strip the walls, get rid of all the landscaping. And in fact, they're going to turn this into the mural space. So this will be right on Broadway, right at the foot of Broadway, on your way down to Scott's. And in fact, what this will turn into is a blank wall that will be the background for the, the mural. Um, we're actually, what they're going to do is they're going to frame it, light it, and put board behind it. So should this wall ever need to be removed, in fact, it will be able to take the mural and move it as well. So we now have their agreement. They've started forwarding funding. We have um, already raised in this effort $8,000 from the Rotary Club of Oakland. Our club has already raised $1,500. Piedmont Montclair will raise $2,500. And so really in order for us to be full partners in this, we just need to raise out of our club another $1,000 and this mural will take place. The work that's going to be done by the, the uh, general contractor of converting this wall will happen within the next month. And we expect to have this mural up for a reveal by the end of the rotary year. So we now, I can say with, with a very high level of confidence, we now have a mural project. We have our artists, we have our funding largely in place. We have a place to put it. We have all the partners at the table ready to go. So we'll be able to see progress. Oh, one more thing. There will be a plaque that we will put on the wall that will be our Rotary logo. It will articulate the three clubs that have brought this together with a very short descriptor of what this mural stands for. And CIM and the authority so into it, they said, you design it and we'll pay for the plaque and put it on there as part of it. We absolutely want Rotary to, to be a prominent feature of this expression in the in Jack London Square. So it looks like we got ourselves a project. Anyway. What's the deadline for us raising the our our part of it? Um, well, I think it, it, within the next month. What I want before you folks, you know, make decisions is to get to that last concept board. So you're actually seeing what you're going to be a part of. And as as you know, we raised some out of a great idea that Brandy brought to us for the Super Bowl. Um, it's not too late to get the bracket from the Sweet 16, is it, Dan? I see. But anyway, um, my hope is that we'll have this. Um, we should be in, in, in that mode in April, and we can take the next step. Anyway, thank you for letting me share. That's awesome. Thank you for that update. I, it's kind of crazy to me that it's, you know, it came out of um, sitting with all the Area 1 presidents and president-elects and kind of was crafting a statement um, at that time. And it was like, my, I, I don't know what possessed me to say, that's it. We're just gonna say something. <laughs> what, what, what else? Are we gonna do something else besides that? And it just, to me, it's, it feels kind of childish in a way to think of it, like responding in that way. But I also think it really would challenge the group in thinking differently. And I, you know, it's nice to kind of see that impact that that statement kind of had. Um, so we have a physical representation of, of that statement and putting into act, like actually being people of action. Um, so that was, that's awesome. Totally. Um, yeah. Um, any questions for anyone else? Comments, concerns? Um, before we move on, I wanted to just also highlight and thank um, Brad, Lisa, Dan, and not present Josephine for their work um, with the Area One speech contest on Friday. I got to attend and it was really neat to kind of see these, uh, I mean, young adults do public speaking. And I mean, I'm still kind of terrified of it. So to see these young adults like do that with such like ease, it seemed, um, I don't know, it just, 
kind of wish I had had more practice in that realm uh, at that age, but uh, it is true what a lot of uh, the judges said. It's like uh, something that you can kind of take to the bank in a way, like a deposit in your life of like what you'll be able to take, a skill that you can take in the future. And I just, yeah. that was really impressive. Um, it kind of want me to think of how we can kind of do that in the future. I don't know what high school we have we've partnered with in the past, but uh, it's something I'd like to kind of explore more. Uh, but, you know, and I'll pass that note on to the next president, you know, next year. Oh, me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, um, so thank you so much. Uh, Zipport, welcome. Uh, this isn't your first time with the group, first time virtually, but it's really good to see you again. Welcome. Thank you. Um, so here's your, I'm, I'm trying to condense your intro, but you know, not, not trying to take anything away, but 